We did a website for the store. Oh, show. right. Everyone got a seat? I'm really excited about today, um, and partly because, you know, audio is my world, but also partly because um, uh, this is a, a program on podcasting is something that we've talked about for years now and have not really known where to turn to find an expert. And so I... I'm very grateful to Daniel Hall for introducing me to Dave Jackson, who is our presenter today. Dave uh, is in the, the Podcasting Hall of Fame. I don't know if you knew that there was one of those, but there is. And, um, and he runs the School of Podcasting, which I um, was a, been a student in. And so um, I'm just really, really happy and excited to introduce our presenter today. Dave Jackson. Thank you so much. I'm laughing. They're, they're hard to come by. I have a box, a brand new box of business cards in my hotel room. And I forgot to bring them. I have five here. But um, if you want to follow me and you have a smartphone, you can text SOP, which is short for School of Podcasting, to 31996. And uh, you'll get a little text message from me that says, click here if you're on Apple, click here if you're on Google. And everybody's going to ask me, how did you do that? It's a thing called, uh, I believe it's slicktext.com. Um, but that's a way if you want to get in touch with me. Everything is at schoolofpodcasting.com. And now the boring slide. Uh, I've been podcasting since 2005, uh, which was fun because back then people were like, yes. Say the address again. The what? Oh, for the texting thing? Yeah. Uh, slicktext.com. No, before that. Oh, uh, my website? Yeah. Schoolofpodcasting.com. Oh, okay. I thought that was a number. Oh, oh, let's go back. I'm sorry. Text SOP. Thank you. To 31996. Thank you. That's and that's what I love. So if you have a question today, uh, feel free to interrupt me. And uh, if, it, if it fits in with what I'm saying, I will answer it. If not, I will. It's the teacher. My background is in teaching. Uh, I taught in the corporate world for 20 years, so I will write it on the board and we will talk about it uh, later. If it doesn't fit. So, I've uh, been podcasting since 2005, started the School of Podcasting. That show has 2.7 million downloads. Um, and because of my podcast, I got a job working at Libsyn, which is a kind of a weird word. It's short for liberated syndication. But the beauty of that, and we'll talk about this a lot, what podcasting really does is it opens up relationships. Becky just talked about, I know Daniel Hall, she met Daniel, et cetera, et cetera, and that's one of the beautiful things about it. But it was great, I called up the vice president of Libsyn when I was let go from my previous teaching job. I said, hey buddy, this could be a really awkward phone call. And he goes, what's going on? I go, I got good news and bad news. And he's like, I'll play, what's the bad news? And I said, I just lost my job. And he goes, what's the good news? And I go, I'm available to work for you. <laughs> and now I do. So uh, that's all because of that. I actually did win an award for Best Technology Podcast back in 2017. And yes, there is an actual Podcasters Hall of Fame. That's me with the award. And uh, those are my websites. And I'm going to steal. Uh, did Ruth leave? I'm, the, I, I'm now going to call myself a, uh, a podcast midwife. Oh, God. I love that. <laughs> for I take your idea and give it out to the world. So what I want to do today is start off with like ground zero. Let's, let's just start with what the heck is a podcast. Uh, it can be audio, it can be video. There were actually a lot of video podcasts and then this thing came along came YouTube. You may have heard of it. And that's why the primarily right now, podcasting is seen as a, an audio format. The uh, other thing, if you want to get like uber geeky, you can actually podcast a PDF. It's one of the, it's in the kind of coding of it, if you wanted to. And I've seen a couple of companies that will actually have their manuals available as a podcast. To me, that's always a head scratcher, but okay, it's there. And then the big key is, and we're not going to get super geeky today. It's distributed through a thing called an RSS feed. And in a minute, I'm going to explain what that is in a super simple way. But that's what makes a podcast a podcast. And technically, that's why YouTube is not a podcast. I think we're all content creators, but because I can't subscribe in an app to YouTube, technically it's not a podcast. But I kind of, there are times that people will like fight to the death over that, and I'm like, in the end, 
What YouTube did is if you want to watch YouTube, you have to go to YouTube. With podcasting, you can consume a podcast in a multitude of uh, different uh, apps, which is what we're going to get to. So what I like to do is start with something we understand. We all understand radio, right? We all remember Wolfman Jack and all the people that we, we grew up listening to. That's a little before my time, but I remember Wolfman Jack. But, right, you had your typical DJ in the booth, and that would go out via some sort of tower, and that tower had a frequency. And if you actually looked at the frequency, that's kind of what it looked like, a big bunch of gobbledygook. And that doesn't do us any good, but when we put that gobbledygook into, oh, I'm from Ohio, we have WMMS, home of the buzzer. And um, so if, if you tune into 100.7, home of the buzzer, uh, you get actual music in a lot of commercials and uh, some, some DJs. Uh, but if you put that 100.7 into an actual radio, and it doesn't matter if it's an old kind of radio, if it's a car stereo, if it's an old boom box, uh, you got something that you can listen to. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. Podcasting is not a whole lot different. Now, instead of your DJ with this really expensive equipment and an FCC license and all this other stuff, you've got you in your bedroom. Now, this is stock photography, and, and the teacher of me can't let this go. Number one, don't buy a blue snowball. That's a horrible microphone. Number two, her mouth should be about here. You want, I always tell people about three, yeah, talk to Becky, she'll tell you. I usually tell people three fingers, and if you want to avoid popping the peas, uh, instead of talking to the mic like this, point it at the corner of your mouth and talk across it. So when I see this, and I'm like, oh, that's a great example of podcasting from your bedroom, but that's horrible technique. Um, and she does have headphones in, which is great, because you do need headphones so you can monitor what you're doing when you have a popping pee or something of that nature. So instead of the DJ, it's now you in your, your bedroom or wherever. Instead of the big tower, that is super expensive and you've got to maintain it and all that other stuff. Now you can use a media host. Well, I work for Lipson, so of course there's Lipson. If you don't like Lipson, there's Blueberry, there's Podbean. I tend to tell people to avoid free stuff. And you're like, but it's free. I know seven over the last 15 years that it turns out, call me crazy, free is not a good business model because bandwidth is not free. And they always come in and they're like, we're gonna help you make money from day one. And they do, point zero, zero. The last time I checked, that was zero, but it's point zero, zero, one, seven cents per download, which means if you get 300 people, you might make like 34 cents. But free media hosting doesn't work. So, but the good news is where the, the tower, yes, Libsyn is a, it's a media host. We are the people that you, you take your MP3 file, you upload it to us. So in the same way that the DJ talks into a microphone and it goes out the tower and it gets syndicated everywhere, here you talk into your microphone, you upload it to us, and we syndicate it everywhere. So you used to have the tower that blasted your signal. Now you have a media host of some sort. And thank you, by the way. That's exactly what I want. If I've confused you, just stop me, I'll, I'll back up and, and re-explain it. So instead of a tower, you have a media host. And instead of a frequency that people can tune into, you have this thing called a feed. So uh, RSS, Real Simple Syndication, is what that stands for. And you get this feed. Now my feed, instead of being 100.7, is schoolofpodcasting.lipson.com slash RSS. And when you see that, you go, there's nobody that's going to A, type that incorrectly, and B, remember it. So that's fine. What you do, anybody here remember Play Doh? Right? Remember Play Doh? You get a big ball of clay, and you're like, Ew. and Play Doh, yeah, remember that? That's what I'm talking about. So you get this big ball of clay, it was nothing, but you would smush it into something, pull the hammer down, and woo, I have a bunch of stars or whatever it was. This is the Play Doh that you don't give to anybody. You put this into apps and out comes something that you can do. So my analogy for this is when you, uh, I remember once I was driving across Arkansas and I get scammed and it just kept going and going <laughs> and going and the only thing it found was classic country and I was like what is classic country and I listened and I'm like it's bluegrass. I can't just like scan again. That's the only station I have. So when you finally find the station that you're like oh finally some classic rock but I was looking for 
what do you do when you put it in one of your presets, right? So, so far, so good. So now, instead of having, remember, schoolofpodcasting.lipton.com slash RSS, uh, well, now I submit this stuff to Apple, and what they do is like Play-Doh, they swoosh out a link that you can now give to your audience. So one thing I can say wholeheartedly, Apple search, God bless them, there are 870,000 podcasts in Apple Podcasts as of yesterday. Um, their search is horrible. And by that, I mean it's bad. And by that, I mean it stinks really, really. Like, my favorite is, Libsyn has a podcast called The Feed. Because the whole RSS feed, they got kind of cute there. If you type in The Feed, it will not show up. You have to put in The Feed Libsyn. You know, uh, I have a show called The Podcast Rodeo Show, where I grab a random podcast and see how long I can hang on. Um, <laughs> because it has the word podcast and show in it, it never shows up. You have to search for Dave Jackson. So I always tell people, don't, the, the worst thing you can say to your audience is, find me an Apple podcast, because there's literally the chance they're not. But what Apple has done is you, you give them this thing, you submit it to on a website from Apple, you log in under your Apple ID, they give you this. And when you put this on your website and people click on it, it takes them right to your listing in Apple Podcasts where they can click on subscribe. We'll get the subscriptions there. So basically, Apple and Google and a bunch of other ones give you presets that you can give your audience. So now when they click on that, it takes them right to your show. Yes? Are you able to deliver the same content to all of those presets without discrimination or interference? Beautiful. Great question. Can you deliver the same content to all those locations? Let's go back to radio. I have my station, 100.7. It's on a Panasonic radio, it's on an RCA radio, same thing, same signal. And over here we've got, I ran out, I don't, it's funny, I can't remember radio. RCA, Panasonic, JVC maybe, um, right? All those have the same stuff, it's just a different type of podcast. So that's really what's changed. On the left is my show in uh, Apple, on my right is my show in Google, it's the exact same stuff. So radios, what used to be uh, radios are now apps. That's the biggest difference. So the one thing I do want to point out is Apple Podcasts, there's nothing actually, it's weird, there are 870,000 podcasts, but there's not actually anything in Apple Podcasts. It's simply a mirror of whatever is in your media host, whether that's Libsyn or Blueberry or whatever. You don't actually upload anything to, to Apple. So people go, oh, I need to go to Apple and fix that. And I'm like, nope, you have to go over here to where you created it. And you fix your typo, and then within 24 hours, it will show up in Apple. But if you say, oh, I need to upload this to Apple, no, you don't, because Apple's just a mirror. Um, they're actually, at this point, they, they still are the number one place where people find podcasts, because they were the people, Steve Jobs, back in, like, 2007, was the first big company that kind of said, hey, we're going to put our arm around this. This looks really cool. Yes? The, the, the lips are to do that, we don't have uh, you have to go to Apple once. Oh, well, that's a great question. So let me, yeah, this will actually help uh, answer that. So let's talk about subscriptions. For those that remember the old magazine shop, right? You go over, and for me, when I was a teenager, it seems there was a new bag magazine or whatever it is you're looking for. And if you really, really liked that magazine, what did you do? You subscribed to it. You had it sent to your home. Anybody remember that? Right. Okay. So same, same theory different concept. Uh, that is my podcast on a website. That is my podcast in an app. Same content. So you can go to the website every day. Does Dave have a new episode? Does Dave have a new episode? Then you can do that, right? I could keep going into the magazine store. Or if I really like it, I'll subscribe and it will be sent to my home. So I can go to the website, keep checking, or I can just subscribe. And when there's a new episode, it will automatically go to my phone, my tablet, whatever it is I'm subscribing. So subscriptions really haven't changed a lot. For those of us that remember the phone book, I actually got one the other day and I said, they still make these, really? It's like this big. But it used to be you would have the phone book and then usually in a drawer by the phone that had a ringtone called the phone, if I remember right. Uh, and you had some other little, um, little book that you would have and you would have the, the kids' school and the pizza place 
and Jimmy and Tommy and Aunt Mary and whoever else, you had a smaller version <coughs> of the phone book, and you only went to the phone book when you needed to find something, you know, a, a car repair or something. You mean like a Rolodex? Yes, very much. <laughs> a big giant Rolodex. So now, you have 870,000 podcasts on Apple Podcasts. And you're like, ugh, I don't want to have to lug that thing out every time I want to find my favorite podcast. So in the same way that I don't have to dig through the phone book when you're in school, you have your own smaller version. Well, now your smaller version is your phone. So you find the podcast you want that you're going to use all the time, and you subscribe to them. And so now the beauty of that is uh, that's the icon. And I keep bringing up Apple because they are the big gorilla in the room. There is Google Podcasts. There are other apps. But let's just talk about the big one in the room. But the beauty of this is that that's the icon it looks like. If you have an iPhone, it's on there somewhere. Or you could go into the App Store and add it. But by default, it's in there. And as of the last release, it's on, they put it on the front page, which all podcasters want to find. Because somebody's going to go, what's this thing? And so what's great is when you fire that app, it goes over to Dave's show and goes, hey, are there any new episodes? And then it goes over to that tech show. And then it goes over to that writing show. And then it goes to the one about global warming. And then it goes to the one, and then it goes to the one, and then it goes to the one. And if there are any new episodes, they come down to your phone. And you can go into your phone settings and say, look, only download podcasts when I'm on Wi-Fi. So you're not chewing up your bandwidth of your, your phone provider. So far, so good? Yeah. That is the power of podcasting. And the, the beauty of this is if we went back to when I started, you used to have to, you had an iPod and you would overnight, because you were still on like dial up, you, you would download these podcasts, plug in your iPhone, you could take that to your car, but when you're out of podcasts, you were out of podcasts, you had to go back home to plug back in. So when this came to uh, the iPhone and smartphones, now you can kind of just stop into a Starbucks, get some Wi Fi, download some more stuff, and go back out. So what do I need to start a podcast? Uh, wait, did I answer your question? I didn't answer your question. Let me go back. So your question was, can I get to all these places using Libsyn? Yes, because Libsyn is your, your frequency, that RSS feed. So that frequency will work with any app. And you have to do that once. So you go to Apple and say, hey, here's my thing. And they go, that looks good. And usually within three to five days, you're in there. Spotify takes about 24 hours. iHeartRadio, God bless them. And they're working on it, they tell me. It takes about three months to get approved. But most of these, you just submit them once, and then it's just a matter of every time you put out a new episode, it gets submitted. So what do I need to, uh, to start? You need a microphone, and you don't have to spend, yes? What does syndicated mean? Syndicated, um, that's a good question. Distributed, yeah, yeah, distribution. You, you are um, publicized. Everywhere you're available to the public, and because you have this app that's out there watching, as soon as that changes, I'm going to grab that episode and bring it down. So it's looking, oh, nothing new. Oh, 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 there's a new episode, I'm going to bring it down. So, what you're doing is you're that company is making it public. So then the app goes, Oh, there's a new one, got it. So, does that, does that help? Yeah, you said distributed and publicized, both kind of different things. That's true. I'm talking to authors, um, publishers, publishers yeah. Um, publish? Wait, yeah, publish. that is. That's the button you actually click on. It's publish. Yes. Thank you. Since the syndicator on this at what point do they charge you in full time? Can you repeat the question? Sure. Um, per upload? No. Per delivery? Got it. The, the question is obviously, this is not for free, so what the heck do we get charged on? There are different companies with different models. With Libsyn, we only charge you. You get X amount of space a month, and you can upload as many episodes as you want. And if you need to, you can go over and you can work more stuff. So that's, and then you can have it as, if you're on Oprah, Oprah's not even on. If you're on whatever, um, who, if you're on Ellen and you get a gazillion downloads, um, that's fine. It's still 20 bucks or 15 bucks or whatever you charge. Um, other companies will uh, limit on how much you download. So it's like you can upload as much as you want, but if you go over X amount of downloads, then you need to upgrade here. So it's different ones. And then, like I said, there are free services. I don't recommend those because they go out of business, but that's typically the, the two. It's we either you do one fee, and, and to do that, so how do I know how much space do I need? And that is how often am I gonna publish? And then 
uh, how long is my episode going to be? Which always brings up the question, how long should my episode be? And the answer is very simple. There's no such thing as too long, only too boring. <laughs> so uh, I have a slide. I'm, I'm stealing my own thunder. But there's a guy that does a show called Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. His episodes are anywhere from three to six hours long. He publishes about every other 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 month uh, because he'll read like 17 books to do one episode. So he breaks all the rules of podcasting because usually you want a, a set schedule, whatever that is, monthly, weekly, twice a week, whatever it is. Uh, and when Dan puts out an episode, he gets a million downloads in a day. So it's you know it's a matter of how much. How much, uh, how often am I, am I going to publish? How long is my episode? And then what format? And that would kind of get us into a little more geeky that I want to get into here. If you just ask whoever you're using for your media host and say, hey, here's what I want to do. How much space do I need? We'll be happy to go. I would start with, and it's probably going to be 15 to $20. Yes? I'm still wondering about the RSS. Yes. What exactly do I need to know to use Do I have Nothing. Nothing. It's, it's how much do you know about the frequency when you listen to the radio? Just that it's a number, right? So for me, I know my RSS feed is schoolofpodcasting.lipson.com slash RSS. And I just know that if I copy that, and there's a link in, in your dashboard, and paste that into Apple, and I click verify this, they go, looks good, and you go, good, submit. I mean, if you looked at it, it's a bunch of just text that says, here's where the audio file is, here's where the artwork is, here's the description. You get one through your media host. Your media host. So you get that through Libsyn, Blueberry. If we go back to that tower, the tower it used to be where it blasted out your frequency to however strong their, their uh, signal was. Now you have a media host that gives you an RSS feed. And that feed is then put into all these different distribution points like Apple and Spotify. And then the audience tunes in to those apps. Does that kind of help? Yes. Um, where is your podcast? Where does it live? Is it on your computer? On your media host. You build it on your you build it on your computer or your phone, although I don't recommend the phone, but you can. Uh, you build it on your computer and then in the same way that the DJ is in his booth, but where does the DJ really live? He lives in the frequency that you tune into. So you build your MP3 file on your computer, you upload it to your media host, Lipson or whoever, and that's where the audience then gets it. You publish it to your list. That when you, when you hit publish, it says, so let's say I have one of the, yeah, so when I hit publish, it updates your RSS feed. So let's say my RSS, we're just gonna say it has two fingers in it, just to keep things, I don't wanna get too per geeky. So I have two fingers in my RSS feed that, that I made from Libsyn. One of those is the text and one of those is my MP3 file. I make a new episode and I go into Libsyn and I go, here's the MP3 file, here's my text, here's my description. And when I hit publish, all of a sudden my RSS feed goes from two items to four. And this is the second episode and here's the second episode file. Now this is all gobbledygook. I don't understand fingers. But when I put fingers into an app, that app goes, oh, that's the text, that's the MP3 file, that's the text, that's the MP3 file. And all I know is I pull up the app and it goes, here's a new episode, I want to hit play. That play button looks at the RSS feed and says, the media file's over there on Lipson. So when you hit play, here comes the audio. But yeah, for the record, this is perfectly normal. RSS feeds are confusing. They really are. Even though I say it's just like the, it's just like the uh, frequency of a radio, you tune into it. How you create it is kind of what I skipped. It's not. When you tune into the RSS, you can choose a lot of programs. As you tune on the radio, you can listen to the program they have up at that moment. That is true. We're going to talk about that later. Radios, when you start a radio, start playing something. Podcasts do not. And that's why titles are really, really important. Because you have to click something to get a podcast to start. Yes? Just a quick clarification. You have a blog, yes. you have a website, yes. you have an RSS feed already. Exactly. Like that. Thank you, Dave. Yes. Ask you for it. Yeah, so, yes. Right. They'll, they'll actually, like a WordPress, they'll, they'll give, they'll ask you for it
That's what we're, I'm glad you asked that. What do I need? I need a microphone. Uh, this is an, uh, uh, this is an Audio Technica ATR2100. Just email me, Dave at schoolofpodcasting.com. I've got a link to all this stuff. Um, that is a microphone. Audio Technica ATR2100. There's actually a new one that's kind of taken over. I should update my, my uh, slide here. Samson as an S A M S O N, I believe is how you spell it. It's not Samsung, that's a whole other company. Samsung Q2U. That one goes, well, we'll talk about it. what are these called. Um, you need software. And the good news is, on a Mac or a PC, you can use a software called Audacity. There are people making a living editing audio in Audacity. It is not the prettiest software on the planet, but it works. So you can get started using Audacity. You need a website. I'm assuming most of you have one, but if not, uh, coolerwebsites.com is a website host. There's a difference between a web host and a media host. We'll talk about that. Uh, you need a media host. Uh, so obviously I recommend Libsyn. And people always say, oh, you recommend them because you work there. And I go, no, it's actually the opposite. I work there because they're the best, because I want to be able to go home and sleep at night. Um, and it's just Libsyn.com. And then you need an RSS feed, which coincidentally uh, is automatically generated when you use a media host. And then the last thing you'll need is a piece of artwork which is what is in, and that you can either make, there's a great resource, which I think is on my next slide. No, um, but there's a resource called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. If you've never used it, it's this cool image tool that you can use to make your own. Spell it again, please. C-A-N. C as in cat. Yep, cat, uh, April, oh no, Nancy, uh, Victor, Apple, Canva. I was never in the military. I guess that shows. <laughs> uh, canvas without the S. It's yeah. canvas. There you go. I like that. So the other thing you need is passion. Now, why do you need passion? Because that first episode is like anything else. Everybody remember tying your shoes the first time and you just couldn't get it, or trying to shoot a basketball for the first time. And that didn't work out too. But when you first start that podcast, that first episode, you're going to go, this takes a whole lot more time than I thought it was going to take. And then you put it out to the world and you're like, I'm in Apple, I'm in Spotify, it's great. And then you go in and you check your stats and you have 17 downloads. And you're like, I spent 14 hours to get 17 downloads. Yeah. And so when you have passion, you're like, I've I got to get this message out. Nobody, I can't get on TV. I can't get on radio. I cannot get, people need to hear this. That's the drive that's going to make you go, that's all right. That's 17 more people that didn't hear my message before. And they're going to go tell somebody. And next week it's going to be more. But if you're looking to get rich quick, hmm, podcasting is not your thing. And that's people go, aren't you a podcast consultant? I'm like, yep, and that's the truth. But on the other hand, there are Wendy's and Burger Kings that go out of business every week. So you got to have a good product. You had a question in the back. Uh, the most popular uh, podcast goes by building your audience so is your question are the most popular podcasts those that make their own podcasts or those that are only guests on other podcasts uh, the most popular one featuring input from a lot of people for the ones, yeah, the ones that right now are starting to rise up the charts, because what has happened over the years is podcasting is now so popular. 51% of Americans have listened to a podcast at least once. We are now more popular in the car than Sirius Satellite Radio. And that's when radio went, um, we better start looking at this because they're, they're about ready to eat our lunch. And so what happened is NPR... Um, a bunch of other radio companies bought up podcast uh, creation teams. Oh. So you'll have things like Radio Lab has, and at the end, they're like, our executive producer was so and so, our so and so, the music director, they have, and I'm not making this up, a team of 20. And so some people go, can I, in fact, this is my episode in three weeks, can I compete with a team of 20? And my answer is, I was up for an award in a category with four of the companies that had teams of 20. And I am a team of one. So my answer is, yeah, you can. It just takes a lot of time and effort, and you got to do things that the big companies don't. 
like answer every email, answer every tweet, connect with your audience, because it's that audience that votes. And Serial, which is like one of the most popular podcasts ever, wasn't nominated. Why? Because they put out great content, but they never interacted with their audience. It's all about relationships. Yes. You will probably get into this, but yes. what we would all like to understand the most more the potential revenue of podcasts. That's this afternoon. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. Here's, here it is in a nutshell. Here's how you make money with your podcast. Number one, get an audience. People love to skip that step. Get an audience. And how long does it take an audience? Well, according to Valerie Geller, radio veteran, about three years. When I asked uh, Natalie Ekdahl, who runs BizChecks, who her podcast now has its own major event, how long did that take? Three years. When I talked to Darren Dake, who's a coroner in Missouri, who now runs his own school for certification to be a coroner, how long did that take? About three years. So this is where I say, if you're ready to quit your job in six weeks, podcasting's not for you. It's about relationships that lead to opportunities. I got an opportunity here that led to me being on the radio. I did, that was like bonus. That was icing on the cake, yes? The question is, um, has there been any uh, research or stats about whether a prescriptive nonfiction can be turned into yeah. how to podcast as opposed to uh, morning jobs and now? Yeah, it, it's a different model than what it is, in fact, can we put, can we pin that one? Honestly, we'll talk about money, but we're, it's, it's a different model. And what it is, it's crowdfunding. It's you, you have an audience that is like, oh my God, this is so good. And they want you to do your art because I love your art, that they will give you money. Yeah, so. well, I, I wrote a nonfiction book about- um, Oh, nonfiction is great. You become the expert. Like downsizing for seniors, okay, let's just say oh. that. And you take that kind of material from a nonfiction book and figure out a podcast. From a fiction or nonfiction? Not nonfiction. So we're talking how to. Not, how to. How to. Oh, that's the part. I do how to. How to podcast. And the beauty of it is you position yourself as an expert. Right. And, and the beauty of it is, here's the biggest difference. This is going to clear up a lot. Radio is broadcasting. So we're talking sports, money, health, and sex. Niche. Right. Podcasting is chameleon breeding, herpes. Um, uh, Not in the same breath. No. Um, frisbee, frisbee golf. Um, yes. Take, I, I'll, I'll give you a classic example. I had a client of mine that did a show called Special Labs. She had a, a son who was off the charts with uh, autism, but she loved Disney. So she created a podcast, and she was an expert. She knew every rule and regulation for uh, theme parks. And so she created a show like, how do I take people with special needs to theme parks? It was called Special Labs. She never got more than 300 downloads an episode, and she had a sponsor. Why? Because she found a sponsor who specialized in what? Transportating people with special needs. It's not about getting 10,000. It's finding that niche and solving a problem. Okay. Narrow cast. Yes. You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. That's the one and only Zig Ziglar. Uh, why would I podcast? Which kind of answers some of these questions. Uh, why are you podcasting? If you can't answer why you're starting a podcast, and if the answer is, I don't know, it sounds fun, don't start a podcast. Uh, Just don't. You have to know why. For me, and I position myself as an expert. I get to meet people. Well, let me just go through my slides. I connect with people in your field. I have a client of mine that does the school of banking. I asked him, I go, how's your downloads? And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, you can give me feedback? Like, how's that? He's like, oh, I don't know, a little, yeah, kind of. I'm like, wait, let's back up. What's our why again? He goes, oh, that's easy. I get to talk to people I have no business talking to. <laughs> he, goes, I, I, he goes, if I went up to a CEO and said, hey, can we talk for like 20 minutes? He'd be like, get out of here, kid, you bother. But if I say, would you like to come on the school of banking? He goes, they, they line up. So that's one. You get to talk to people you have no business talking to. Yes. Um, one of the things that I can talk to another gentleman about is problems being a creator. Right. Right. And just doing the creative works mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, every time we come to a meeting, I always find that there are other yep. so many more marketing tools. You know, Think about this. So, so, so 
radio, satellite radio. The question is, uh, are there podcasters who have sort of like syndicates that you can present something to and they can do the work for you? Like yes. You yeah. And, and think about this. There's many people that start a podcast, and the first thing they get done when they got when they got done recording is, I don't want to do that again. I just want to talk into a microphone and you do everything else. It's not free. They're going to charge you about a hundred bucks an episode, but they're producers. Yeah. Producers. Yeah. So um, here's another reason. If you want to build a business, why? Because you get to interact with your audience or your future audience. You can use, a, use it as a resume builder. I've been hired twice. I got hired at Chancellor University in Cleveland, Ohio, because in my interview, they said, well, what are your hobbies? And so I like podcasting. You know, wait, you know podcasting? And I go, yeah, they go, it'd be great. You can make one for the school. Uh, put it out to students on how to be, uh, uh, how to study better and things like that. Uh, you can be an expert in your field. So I do a show called, the, it doesn't look like it. I do a show called the Logical Weight Loss Podcast because I'm about 30 pounds overweight right now. I inspire people through my failure. But I say at the beginning of the show, I, I, go, uh, I go, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trainer, I'm just a person like you trying to lose weight. I get the most insanely detailed questions about, well, my blood level, glyco, and then I'm like, I don't know if you heard this at the beginning, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a trainer, but I have a podcast, so they see me as an expert. So you will be seen as an expert. Um, if you generate a fund to gain the attention of the industry in your field, someone in the back has a book about cancer, you need to look up Lee Silverstein. He does a show, and he went to the American Cancer Society and said, hey, would you like to partner with us? And they're like, podcast, podcast. Lee put out an awesome podcast called We Have Cancer. And everybody in the cancer community was talking about it to where eventually the American Cancer Society went, hey, Lee, like how do we get involved with this podcast that you're talking about? So you can be seen as an expert in attention attention people. Uh, maybe you just want to entertain people. Well, you can do that too. There are plenty of people doing that. And you just want to have a fun new hobby. You can do that as well. So here's the key. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So, so here's the thing. You have to figure out. We said, why am I getting into a podcast? So you have to have your reason. If it's like I want to sell more books, okay, good. Who is your target audience? Who's going to enjoy your book? What? And you have to really, really. Really answer that. Who reads your books? And that's where a podcast, if you have one, you can start talking about your genre, whatever that is, and then get to know your customers and find out what they want, and then put that stuff in your next book. Why does Netflix have really good programming? Because they're watching how much do you watch of each thing, and then they make stuff that matches the stuff that you just watched. So by getting to know your audience, that's key number one. Then you've got your goal up here. I want to sell more books. What you have to do then is this is what's going to hold my listeners' attention. This is going to help me sell more books. But I can't talk about lead magnets. I can't talk about all the business stuff and sales funnels. That's not going to entertain my audience. And I don't want to talk about cat videos. And I don't want to talk about their kids' second grade teachers as schmuck. That's not going to help me get to my goal. But if I can find things in the middle, that will hold their attention and further my goal. And that's where I always tell people, that's where you want to live. And that's where starting a podcast is not hard. Starting a good podcast is not easy. Yes? I want to uh, ask, uh, if I'm wanting to start a podcast, so I write science fiction. If okay. I'm going to do a, a podcast, I would like to find out how many other sci-fi podcasts there are out there so I can see if I can differentiate myself from them. So, yep. How do I do that? Google. Hmm. Just Google science fiction podcast. Ah, okay. That's it. Is, yes. Is, is there a connection with podcasts or how Kissing Cousins is an infomercial? No. And here's why nobody tunes into an infomercial on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a guy, that, there was a guy, if I go back, I'll, I'll make this quick. So where I get pitched on time to here. There's a guy named Joe Batal, super duper internet marketer. And this is before Apple, so this was a while ago. 
and there was a website that, that rated podcasts, and, and the typicals were at the top. And all of a sudden, this Joe Vitale guy came out, and he put out one episode about how great Joe was and all the wonderful things he used to do. Shot right up to the top of the list because Joe had a giant email list. Everybody went and listened to this podcast. Like, it must be good. It's on the top of the charts. It was absolutely horrible. It was a giant infomercial. There was nothing in it. Right? This was all about how great Joe is. Nothing on this side. Nothing for the listener, and I mean as all. And so these people didn't tune in to the second episode. So, yeah, infomercials don't work. Now, you can use them. Even for public service, public promotion. Let's go to what, what, what works in, in publication? Stories. So if there's a story, public service announcements, because these people over here can't get the word out that they need help, go interview them and put them on a podcast and pull the heartstrings of the listeners to go, where do I donate to help this guy? Anybody here seen uh, uh, ugh, Super Size Me Too on Amazon? It's all about the chicken industry. Hmm. And at the end of it, the guy that helped the guy make the movie, that kind of got him on the inside of the chicken industry, can't get any more chickens because the chicken industry is bad and he helped him make a documentary. And I immediately went to the website. I'm like, where do I donate to this guy? When you get the story in there, that's where it helps. Um, quickly, are people listening to podcasts? Yep, like I said, 51% of Americans have on a, uh, they've listened to it. 90%, that's, or I'm sorry, 32%, 90 million are listening on a monthly basis and 62 million on a weekly basis. That is going to go up probably another 5% when the numbers come out here in April. Yes. Is there an age? Uh, are the millennials listening to the old folks part? Um, it's actually more boomers uh, at this point. There are younger people. That's what Spotify is bringing in. You go to Edison Research. Um, I'm turning into Peter Brady. I love this. Edison <laughs> Research. Uh, they have definitely that information. I don't have that in this particular presentation. If you had a quick question. Yeah, I go, um, I miss um, fresh air and I go listen to it off time. Is that a podcast? That is a podcast, yeah. Absolutely. And a lot of radio stations are doing that now. Yeah. The beauty, it's another power of podcasting. I have a show called Your First Podcast Always Stinks. It was released in April of 2005. It's my very first episode of the School of Podcasting. It still gets downloaded. So your, your podcast often is not the business. Your podcast is the business card. that gets people to go, ooh, I want more about that. Um, like I said earlier, we're already ahead of satellite radio. So this is in the car. So we're getting up there slowly but surely. And every, every year it goes up. 93% um, of people are in the car. And this is a really sad stat. Anybody want to guess the end of the sentence? Oh, Two hours alone. a day. Oh, no. alone. And I'm like, oh, oh man. And I'm not making this up. They just did a thing in on that WMMS, Home of the Buzzard. They did a thing, their morning crew last Friday, because I was tuning in just for stories like this. And they were putting food in their mouth and spitting it out and mixing whatever it is they were supposed to eat in a plate. And then you had to eat it out of the other person's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> First thing, now, the fun thing of that was. A, it's all very visual. And I'm like, you do know this is radio, right? And I always just tell people, are you going to tell me that you cannot beat Binky and the Wiz or whatever the, the morning radio show is? The bar is pretty low at radio. Um, <laughs> so keep that in mind. So now let's get into how much does this thing cost? Uh, this, and I'm going to throw in a tangent, a quick one. If you just want to be a guest, this will set you apart from everybody else. Do not use the built-in microphone of your laptop. That's gonna make you sound pretty bad. And in fact, if you wanna be a guest, mention the fact, and here's the one I just mentioned. This is the Samsung G2U. So this little package, you get the microphone, you get a stand, you get a set of headphones, you get a pop filter, all sorts of stuff. Who wants to guess how much that is? Thousand dollars. One twenty. Thousand dollars, anybody else? 200, anybody else? He's got it right on the bot, 69 bucks. So you don't have to spend $1,000 to sound good. Uh, what if it's me and somebody else in the same room that you need one of these? This is a focus right 2i2. That will set you back about 120 bucks, something like that. It's like the best podcastinggear.com. I have a whole website on this kind of stuff. Yes. Ah, 
Well, how do you guys meet when you're not in person? Zoom, right. Zoom.us. You can, yeah, you can connect up. Actually, the, the phone isn't bad if you want to do Zoom on the phone because the microphone in your phone isn't that bad. Um, I just wouldn't do this and put the phone on here because now I'm picking up all sorts of room. Not my first choice. Again, my first choice, get a real microphone and get on a computer. Because you only get one shot at this interview. Yes. Oh, on the phone, Skype. You can get Skype has a phone number. You can, it's $30 a year, and you can call phones from your computer. It's going to sound like the phone. If you put a gun to my head, I will talk to somebody on the phone, but only if there's a gun to my head. Because it's $69 to go buy a microphone. And I've, I've told people, I had one woman, she called me up, she was using her laptop in the middle of Arizona in an RV. And she would not turn off her air conditioning. And I just went, you're not coming on my show. Think of this. You have your audience behind you. You are the goalie. And if you try to put crappy information in front of me, it's not getting to my audience. Because there's only two things that every podcaster has when you start. No listeners and integrity. And I'm not going to let crappy stuff get to my audience. And I've told, I, I, somebody emailed me this week. They wanted to be interviewed. I said, here's the deal. I don't know you. You did a... That's a great job of connecting your expertise to my audience. And I will interview you, but I reserve the right to never publish the interview. If you're good with that, I will interview you. Because if you don't bring value, you're not getting it to my audience. And they went, fair enough. And I went, okay. But I, I don't have high hopes. They did a really bad job of connecting their expertise to my audience. And we'll talk about that in about 15 minutes. Headphones. You need a set of headphones. If you have earbuds, those work. Those are headphones. What you don't want to do is have the sound of the speaker come out of your speakers. Because also in the room is your microphone. Now the sound of the speaker comes out of the speakers, goes into the microphone, which goes back to them. And that's why all of a sudden your speaker, your host, or whoever you're talking to sounds like they're drunk. Because they're listening to their voice on a weird echo. So you want to have some sort of earbuds or headphones. And yes? If they want to sound good and you're competing against NPR, like if, when I hear a podcast that is a phone call talking to somebody on a phone call, they get about two seconds and I'm out. Why? Because there are 870,000 podcasts that sound better than yours. It's free. You know, oh, I use freeconferencecall.com and you can get sound plugged. But you don't have to spend a million dollars. So again, we're talking seventy dollars to get going. This is a uh, it's called a USB interface. It's the Focusrite two i two. If you go to bestpodcastinggear.com, the big name at the top of the screen that has all this stuff, and, and you can actually do it. So yes, if you have a better voice interface, then uh, then uh, if, if they're not going to buy it by right Zoom is going to be reliant on the microphone they have, whether it's the building one in their laptop or something else. But Zoom itself is just a way to connect on the internet, as is Skype, as is Squadcast, as is there's a bunch of them. Same, same yeah. caveat, why yeah. they're running their everything in the background. It's not going to work. Can you repeat what you said? I can't hear. Yeah, he was saying, does Zoom sound better than, say, Skype? And the answer is, they're about the same. In the end, it's going to be the microphone that makes the big difference, not how you connect. Um, you need headphones. In the end, you're going to spend about the price of an Xbox. About 300 bucks. I usually tell people, like, how much does this mean to start a podcast? I go, how about an Xbox? And I'm like, what do you mean? I go, about 300 bucks. Because by the time, it depends on if you bought your own artwork or if you made your own. Uh, is it just you doing solo or is it you and a co host? Because that's now two microphones, things like that. But overall, it's about the price of an Xbox with a game or two if you have a co host. Um, I talked about software, Audacity, GarageBand is also on a Mac, those are both free. If I had to pick the two, even though GarageBand is really pretty, I'd still go with Audacity, because editing in GarageBand is a bit of a headache. You have to do many more steps to do simple stuff that I find odd. Um, Hindenburg Journalist is a program that I use. It's made because it's super, I love it because it's super simple. You'd be like, when I click on equalizer, instead of giving me 40 bands, he gives me bass, middle, and treble. And I'm like, okay, my audience can understand that. Let's do that. Um, it's, uh, you can buy it, it's not free. Adobe Audition is kind of the Cadillac 
of, of podcast um, tools. It does almost your laundry, I think, at this point, if you ask it to. It does everything. It's also got a much steeper learning curve. And that's where I always tell people, remember, this is going to end up in earbuds and car stereos. And so many people, it's not the tech. I've never had anybody say, you have to listen to this podcast. And I'm like, great. Well, why? What's it about? And they go, it sounds like the, the, the audio is like butter for your ears. And I'm like, oh, no. It's always the content. It's not. And so many people love to get hung up on the tech. It's not the tech. It's not the tech. But it makes me feel like I'm doing something to make my show better instead of actually researching what my customer wants, what my listeners want. That takes more time and also puts me in a vulnerable position because what if my listeners say, yeah, I don't like that part about your show. Ooh, that's my art. You can't criticize my art, but if you really want to grow an audience, you gotta get more to work. So, yes? Um, do you ever use these to uh, eliminate dead air? You know how they say more than three seconds of silence on a Mm. Radio broadcast and people are already turning the channel off. No, because a dramatic pause <laughs> can really show people that that person is thinking about the answer. I purposely leave those in because there are people, there's a thing in Audacity where we can say anything above two seconds, trim it down to a half a second. But I want that dramatic pause to show that person really had to think about it. They go, oh, that's a really good question. I think it was the time when I did this. I want that pause in there, because that pause has meaning. If somebody says, have you ever cheated on me, or a spouse or somebody, have you ever cheated on me and you go, no? <laughs> that, that's a big difference then. Have you ever cheated on me? No. Right? Dramatic pauses add meanings to things. So, uh, hosting, we'll go over this quickly. Um, you need a website. Can, and you'll see your website, let's just use Bluehost because a lot of people have heard of that, or HostGator, and they'll say unlimited hosting, unlimited bandwidth for a website. Websites are small, they're kilobytes of information, they're text and pictures. And the problem is, is when you now go from a, I don't know, 35 kilobyte, tiny website, to now I've got a 50 meg MP3 file, and you've got 400 people trying to grab that file at the same time, your website's going to <laughs> and I can't keep up. It's not a bandwidth, it's not a storage, it's a resources. That thing is doing something it was not designed to do. So that's where you need a media. And that's where, um, you know, avoid SoundCloud. They're, they've almost gone out of business multiple times. That's a, that's a music company. Uh, Podcast is free, Anchor is free. Um, and the other thing is, and this is kind of unique, Whoever you use, ask them, can I do a redirect? And what a redirect is, in layman's terms, is it's a change of address. So if I, if I join company A and I go, ugh, I don't sound as good, I want to work with this company, you ask them for a redirect and your audience comes with you. No redirect, you move over here, your audience is still with you. So, and it's usually 15 to $20 a month for you to do that. How are we doing? Okay, good. Uh, artwork, you need artwork. Um, it needs to be somewhere in this realm. This is usually where you go, I just ask your graphic person or go into Canva. Somewhere between 1400 up to 3000. And the big one, and we're, we're keep trying to keep Apple to, to publicize this, it needs to be under 500 kilobytes. And for whatever reason, Apple doesn't mention that. But if your artwork is more than 500 kilobytes, it sometimes stalls updates. And we're like, would you please publicize that? Because they will say it to you off the record. They won't put it on the record. It drives me nuts. Um, so here's an example of one of my shows. You usually just want the name of, like, don't put, like, the website and a big long, it's like, because remember, this is going to end up being about 175 care, no, pixels. It's going to be small on your phone. So um, you can make it for yourself for free. Uh, there are companies, uh, podcasts, artwork.com is about 60 bucks. There's Kappa 99 is I think 50 or, and that's the one I was mentioning before, there's Canva.com. Uh, Spark.adobe.com is also free and you can make your own. But that's something you need. Yes, Mike. Do you use theme music or a theme song? or? You can. You want to get royalty free music? Let's, let's, uh, when it comes to, Somebody name a popular artist. 
Elton John, there we go. I, I cannot use Elton John, not if it's eight seconds, not if I'm not making any money, not if I say this is Elton John and he's my best friend and I've loved him for years. I cannot use Elton John legally in my podcast, period, ever, forever, until they fix it. No, because I need permission from Elton John because he's a songwriter and Bernie Taupin. I need permission from Elton John, the performer, and I need permission from Elton John's record label. If you don't have those three, it's not legal, and they are occasionally suing people for that. Yes. No, so, no, okay, so, so, um, podcastingresources.com is a great website that some guy named Dave Jackson put together, and you'll see <laughs> that there is a spot there for uh, royalty-free music. I use Audio Jungle a lot, audiojungle.net. Do I have to be a geek to make a podcast? And sometimes you're like, ugh, me and technology don't work. Yes? Do you need a separate graphic for each show? Or no, just need one. <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, so, do I need to be a geek? And the answer is no, because you go, uh, I don't know anything about audio mixing, Dave. And I go, have you ever been in the car? Make sure, yeah, have you ever been in the car? You're on the phone. You shouldn't be on the phone in the car in the first place, but you're on the phone, uh, and, and you're, your favorite song comes on, right? So your, the song comes on, you're like, yeah, I love my jam. Phone rings, what do you do? You answer the phone, and then what do you do with the radio? Turn it down. You turn it down so that you can hear the caller, right? Ha! You know how to mix audio. Because that's all it is. I mean, there's more to it, but in the end, here's me saying, welcome to the school of podcasting, blah, 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 blah. I just have to have my theme music low enough so that you can hear it, but not so loud that you can't understand what I'm saying. And you've mixed audio before. And then you go, but Dave, um, so yeah, you turn down the volume. I don't know anything about audio files and uploading to, what's an Libsyn again? I don't, I don't know how to upload a file. When you make your MP3 file in Audacity, if you've ever uploaded a photo to you know, Facebook, if you've ever attached a Word doc to an email, you know how to upload a file, it's the same thing. So you've done that. Uh, I don't know anything about WordPress or doing my own website. Well, if you've seen Microsoft Word, that's on the left. On the right is WordPress. It's bold, it's still bold. And it's, now I'm not here to say there's, a, there's no learning curve. There's obviously a little bit of a learning curve, but so many people are like, oh, I could never do that. And my favorite, Marcy Rosenbaum, she lives in Florida. She called me up, she says, I hate technology. There's no way I could be a podcaster, but I want to hire you. And I'm like, well, I love the attitude. Great, okay. And she called me in tears. And I'm like, what's the matter? She goes, I'm in iTunes. And I go, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you're iTunes. And she goes, no, no, I'm in iTunes. She was completely, never, ever thought she could be a podcaster. I said, we're just going to baby step this. And you can't. You don't have to be a geek. Um, I don't know software. Who wants to guess which button is the record button? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we know that? Because it's been a big red record button on everything we've ever played with in the past. So you don't have to be a geek. You can actually do this. Um, so let's talk expectations. Some of this I already talked about. There are those, and this is Mark Mayer. He's a, a comedian. Was on the last leg of his career. His, his manager was like, I can't book you. You've kind of, for lack of a better phrase, pissed off everybody in Hollywood. And you've kind of blown it because he had a bad coke habit. And he just, it turned his life around. But he's like, look, you've burned way too many bridges. So he started a podcast, called up some of his old friends to get going. And they were really good. And eventually, some guy named Barack Obama went to his website and said, how do I get on this podcast? So he had the president of the United States in his garage with, with guys with guns on the top of the neighbors and all sorts of stuff to do it. Uh, so within the first 24 hours, 735,000 downloads. After three days, it was 900,000 downloads. So uh, these are extreme audience sizes. I already told you about Dan Carlin. He gets a million downloads in 24 hours. Um, Serial, this was back in 2014, was getting 3.4 million downloads. It's a really interesting show where they were talking about a cause. There was a guy that one week you go, oh, this guy's in jail. He's completely innocent. And then you listen to the next episode and go, he is so guilty. And then you listen to the next episode, like, no, we need to spring this guy. And that was the whole magic of that, that particular series was you're like, and I think he actually did get a new trial. I know he's, it's been turned into an HBO documentary. Um, this is a show I did called The Worst Podcast Ever, because I wanted to figure out how many downloads does a really bad podcast get. So I recorded it over the phone, 
I was a, I, I made myself a character. I was a grumpy old man, and I'd be like, what are you doing? You're stupid. Why are you listening to this podcast? And it was just really, really bad. I still got 10 pounds. <laughs> so I always tell people, if you're getting less than 10, we need to talk. <laughs> Something's going on. Uh, the normal audience size right now is about medium, meaning 50% get below, uh, below 150 and 50% get above. How many people in here now? Probably 50, you think? More than that, yeah. So, and I always tell people, like, when I hear say, oh, I'm only getting 200 downloads an episode, I go, don't talk in front of a room of 200 people. That could have listened to a DVD, AM, FM, satellite radio, Xbox, HBO, Hulu, Netflix, and they chose to listen to you. There's no spam in podcasting. If I don't want to listen to your show, I just right swipe and go delete. And it's not like AOL where they try to stop you from, no. If I don't want to listen to your podcast, I can't take it. The average is about 1,500 downloads, but that really depends on your audience. 1,500 downloads for you know, a, a weight loss show was like, mm, you know, I, I could see that being two, four thousand maybe, but fifteen hundred download for the frisbee golf would be ecstatic. It depends on what you're talking. About. Uh, podcasting for business. Um, okay, well, I'm going to buzz through these, and then I want to talk about. I'm going to. I'm calling an audible because I know we have fifteen. Minutes. Uh, you're going to meet like-minded people, so let me bro, blow through these, and I want to come back and talk about being a guest. Um, those are my listeners. I said, hey, wherever you're at, take a picture and send, me, send it to me. And for a while, I just thought white dude with beards were the only people listening. <laughs> so I actually got some females in there. Um, it is going to open doors. I already mentioned about how you can have people that you have no business talking to who will talk to you now because you have a podcast. Now, you and I both know that's crazy, but it's true. So uh, you'll get relationships and then lead to opportunities. You will have loyal listeners. This is Keith and the girl. They're a kind of a comedy duo out of New York City, and their audience started getting their logo tattooed on their arm. And I thought, wow, that is crazy. And then one of their other people said, oh, I can outdo that. And they had their logo branded on their arm. And I thought this was like a cow thing where you just go, ah, and it's done. No, this is with a pen. And they're going, and they're burning. And I was like, okay, that's a whole new kind of loyalty. <laughs> but it comes in handy because the girl, in this case, had to have some sort of heart surgery. And there's not a lot of uh, health insurance in podcasting. So they reached out to their uh, audience and they typed in and, and paid for the bills. Okay, finally, something that will immediately, you guys will love this story. Scott Sigler, Hall of Fame podcaster as well, podcasting in his closet. He did a book. He tried to get a, a book deal. He was doing science fiction and horror. And they're like, what? You can't mix those two. That's crazy. That's like chocolate-covered fish picks. He's like, no, it's great. Check it out. Horror and science fiction. And so he recorded this book. What he ended up doing was giving it away as a podcast. And his audience was like, where is the next chapter? Send me another chapter. He gave away his entire book online. It's called Earth Horror. And so finally, after it was over, everybody's like, man, that was a great book. And he's like, hey, just for the record, I'm self-publishing the book. It's going to be available on Amazon on this date. So if you've enjoyed the book that you already have for free, can everybody buy it on this day? I'll send out another podcast to remind you, but on this day, I want you to buy this book if you enjoyed it at all. So he did. He was number two on Amazon. Not, am not in his category. Number two on Amazon. <laughs> he would have been number one, except there was this other author with a book, you might have heard of it, called Harry Potter. <laughs> so he lost to Harry Potter. But he, so I always tell people, people will pay for things that they get for free. And they're like, no, they don't. I'm like, okay, have you ever seen The Wizard of Oz on TV? Yep. And yet it's available on DVD. Why is that? Because people will buy things that they can get for free. But the biggest thing there, the reason this worked was the relationship. Because every time somebody said to say, hey, when's the next chapter coming out? Scott started a conversation. And he built a relationship with his audience. And that's the part that takes time. So, uh, loyal listeners, oh, no agenda. This is, anybody remember Adam Curry from MTV? Yeah. He is the guy that actually invented podcasting. That's him. This is John C. Dvorak. He's a tech writer. They do a show called No Agenda. And what's beautiful about this is Adam has lived all over the world, and they dissect the media. 
So whether you're a Fox News or a CNN person, you get both perspectives and they, they kind of cross for both of them. And they have a, a thing called, you can become a knight of the No Agenda Roundtable if you donate $1,000. And every week they have, here's a, and they have this whole ceremony, that, da, 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 I knight you sirloin of beef, or whatever it is, and they go on and on, and every week they have a big segment in the middle where they thank all their supporters. Why? Because it's stuff that should be on TV, and then you turn on the news, and it's the Kardashians, I want to throw things at my TV, because these guys are talking about what they're doing in Congress. Um, Jed Brighty does Congressional Dish. Every American should listen to the show. Again, it's not so much... Is it right wing or left wing? She's like, no, I read the bill that went through Congress. Here's what it said, and here's who voted on what. And my voting changed after listening to this because I was like, well, I've always kind of voted this way. And then I went, well, wait a minute. I wouldn't have voted on that. I wouldn't have. There was one where uh, all the stuff that got put into place for the banks to not do what they did to cause the whole of the economy, and they undid that. And that was nowhere on the bill. So these are two examples of when you talk about things that nobody else talks about. So if you have a unique niche that you're writing in. That might be an example. Um, you're going to be seen as an expert. You can get employment. Um, this one, I will say this super quick. I was hired as a new media expo at the time. It was the biggest blogger, YouTube, podcasting conference. The guy that was running their podcast uh, arm stepped down. The owner of the new media expo called Lipson. I didn't work there yet. So we need a podcast guy. Who do you think? He said, what about Dave Jackson? He called Blueberry. He was another podcast media hosting company. What about Dave Jackson? He called Spreaker. And we said, what about Dave Jackson? Why? Because my podcast wallet is not a business. It's a business card. And all three of those companies were familiar with me because I'm the guy that talks about podcasting. So if you were in a niche, uh, where'd John go? Uh, about uh, assisted suicide podcast. You can do a podcast about that and the pros and cons and insights because nobody's talking about that. Um, and then I got hired at Lipson. Um, this is John Dennis. He's a guy that his favorite story was he got to the CEO. He kept trying to get to this person, couldn't get to him. Gatekeeper kept him out of the way. The CEO found his podcast while he was on a treadmill. And he got like a five-figure deal out of it. Um, Jason Hartman is a real estate. If you have a question that you answer all the time. So for me, and I don't mind it, What's the best microphone under 100 bucks? That's also an episode. That should be an episode. So now that when somebody emails you that, you say, oh, here, here's the question, here's the answer, here's the link. Oh, by the way, we talk about this in my podcast. Jason does this, and all those kind of 101 questions are episodes. So now when his customer comes back, they're more informed, and they ask the better questions that are more valuable to his time. And he attributes like millions of dollars to his podcast. He used to be like the um, real estate guy on you know Saturday mornings on Bath Day on the radio station, and now he does a podcast. Um, it's going to increase your sales. It's going to help you stand out. So uh, this is Cleveland Stadium. Uh, we refer to it as the Factory of Sadness. Uh, it, it holds seventy-three thousand people. They say for every two thousand blogs, there is one podcast. So if they came across the loudspeaker and said, uh, can we have all the podcasters down on the field, it would be 37 people. So where's it easier to stand out? So, and this is where, when I see people, I'll find a blogger that has great content, and I go, why don't you put this out as a podcast? And they go, oh, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just a writer, just a writer. And I go, but don't you want your message out there? I'm like, I can't read your blog in the car, but I can listen to it in the car if it was a podcast. Um, you're going to build a global community. Um, I, I, when I started podcasting, I lived in Montgomery, Ohio, everyone together. Where? Yeah, exactly. It's me and the cows, and my first piece of voicemail, so that's where I am, it's, it's south of Akron, was from this guy, Michael Van Lahr, who was in Nuremberg, Germany, and I just about fell out of my chair. I, cause I, I, he hit, he had actually recorded something and attached it. And I hit play and was like, hello, Dave, this is Michael Van Lara from Nuremberg, Germany. And I was like, what? <laughs> hello, Dave, this is Michael Van Lara. I just, I just kept playing it. I could not believe that somebody on the other side of the planet had found my show and actually liked it. Um, so um, when it comes to what am I going to say in my podcast, I would say reverse engineer whatever it is you consume, and you will find that you either uh, like content that makes you laugh, cry, 
think, groan, educate, or entertain. It's got to do one of those. And if you're not doing any of those, don't hit record, because that's called um, boring. In a nutshell, but uh, if you think about it, um, last week's time with John Oliver, very funny, educational. Um, Shark Tank, pretty entertaining, pretty educational. South Park, believe it or not, there's actually a moral story in the South Park, uh, but pretty funny. Mash at times was funny, but yet pulled on heartstrings. Um, the Kardashians love or hate them, uh, but they combine a bunch of these things. Uh, if you think about these people. Right? You either love them or you hate them. And this is why I tell people, be yourself. Because you will attract other people like you. When I get to meet people at events that say they listen to my show, I know I'm going to like this person because they probably take their podcast real serious, but they don't take themselves too serious. Um, if we look at these people, again, these people push buttons. Why? Because they're just being themselves. And if you try to be not offensive, it's just not going to work. It just doesn't. And I was like, I got a one star review last week, and I was like, that's awesome because that person took action. I, I offended them. They're like, who is this guy that thinks this and that? Blah, blah, blah. And it was from my podcast rodeo show. And like, he still had to get, he had to grab his phone, hit a button, do this, and type that out. I moved him to action. Not the action I wanted, and I don't really care, but uh, there are people that will actually take a screenshot of that and put it on a t shirt and sell it to their audience, who will then wear it like a badge. But yes, um, topics for your business. I already mentioned anything that's frequently asked, um, industry news, helpful advice that you want to give to people, interviews. Uh, but what I want to, uh, one last example, then I want to talk about being a guest, because a lot of people are asking about that. This is Gary Leland. Gary uh, runs a sporting goods store. So who is his audience? People that buy sporting goods stuff. He looked for a niche. He found women's fast pitch softball. I don't know why he picked that, but Gary is the king of women's fast pitch softball. So Gary started a podcast. Why? Because I don't care if you're on ESPN 7, they're not covering women's fast pitch softball. These people cannot get any exposure at all. That's probably why he picked them. And so he did that. He put a spotlight on a bunch of people that were starving for attention. And then when it comes time to do a sponsor, guess who the sponsor is? Leland Sporting Goods. And he has coupons and things like that that you can use online that prove that person came from my podcast. Gary used to spend $100,000 a year on Google AdSense to advertise in that. He quit doing it because his podcast is now bringing in more than that. And that money now is in his pocket. So know who your audience is, give them what they need. In this case, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only person that was into women's fast pitch softball. And he said, it's funny, because I have the Olympic team on my speed dial. He goes, and then he actually gets to go to the Olympics as press. So it's, it's an interesting thing. Let me see, oh, Trader Joe's. It's a great example. Trader Joe's does a podcast, and I don't want to end with guessing. Trader Joe's does a podcast. They did an example of one of their podcasts was how they swapped out all their old freezers for ones that were more efficient. And I'm like, that sounds really boring. But if you're into Trader Joe's and you want to save the planet and the environment, and you're like, then that's why I shop at Trader Joe's, talk on it, because they're all about the why. And if you can share the why of your podcast as well, people will join you. Here's another great example. Um, John Deere, it's not a podcast, like you mentioned. Uh, is this an infomercial? No. They're talking about skills and strategies to grow your farm. And one example, they talk about the really higher than veterans. Uh, suicide rate because these big companies are squeezing farms and guys are like this has been in my family since whenever and they're they're killing themselves so why is John Deere talking about that because they don't want farmers to kill themselves because if all the farmers are dead nobody's gonna buy a tractor so it's all about that and they've been doing that since the early days they used to have a magazine for a couple of farmers. so what I want to talk about to end this up is a lot of people asked about guests when, if you want to be a guest, you're like, look, Dave, I like this. I like the fact that I can get started in podcasting for a $60 microphone. But what if I just want to be a guest? And my advice to that is I get asked all the time for people to be on my show. If you do this much homework, you are doing more than most of the people. There are two, two models here, spray and pray. So that's where I get the email that's like, hello, I love your podcast. Well, right there I know this person hasn't listened because I do about four 
and my name's Dave. My name is my name is not hello, it's Dave. And the first thing I say when you turn on my podcast is, hey, it's Dave Jackson from the School of Podcasting. It's not hard to figure out what my name is. It's in my bio. You've done zero. So do that and then tie in something that proves you listen to their podcast. I, I know, uh, if it's our carpenter friend, I was listening to you guys talk about, I'm gonna just say stupid stuff, trusses and carpentry is and nails and stuff. And did you guys know that if you did this and that, I actually have a book about this. Uh, and if you ever wanna talk about it, I would love it. By the way, I love your show. I actually gave you a rating and review in Apple Podcasts because now we're, we're, now we're creating the law of reciprocity. I've done something nice for you. And oh, by the way, I've attached my one sheet. But it's all about how you can deliver value to their audience. Not, I cure cancer. Not, look at me, I'm so great. I'm the best thing since sliced bread. It's here's how I can help your audience. Because most podcasters are just there to serve the audience. And as soon as they put out an episode, the next thing on their mind is, okay, what am I going to talk about for the next episode? And when you come in and say, here's my expertise, here's your audience, and I just put them together, they're going to love it. But if it's like, hey, uh, I listen to your show, no, no details, and I'm so great, look at why I'm so great. No, seriously, I am great. See, here's another line. I'm proving I'm great, and that's why I should be on your show. <laughs> but I haven't proven I know what your show is. Just prove that you listen, and you'll probably get a lot more callbacks. Now, here's the bad thing. That takes more time. So do you want to spray and pray and hope you get 1%, or would you like to take some time Send out 10 emails to get booked on eight. It really depends on what you want. Any other questions as we wrap up? Because I realize I have a minute. Yes. You have, four, you have four podcasts. Yes. I also have no wife and children. <laughs> I have one. I, I made a website strictly for this. And it's powerofpodcasting.com. We'll have Ask the Podcast Coach because of my podcast, School of Podcasting. Uh, what else am I missing? Uh, building a better day, logical weight loss. Power of podcasting.com. No, that's why I made power of podcast because I had somebody said, Do you have any other episodes? And I go, Oh, actually, yeah, go to power of podcasting.com. You'll find everything you do. But I didn't do that till about three years ago when somebody asked me, I'm like, Oh, you know what? Now, if I was smart, I would promote my other stuff. Oh, your podcast consultant. That's another one. That one's. School of Podcasting is about 30 minutes long. Your podcast consultant, smart lessons in less than 10 minutes for the busy podcast. Yes. I'm a little confused about the relationship with video production, mm -hmm. audio uh, production part. At first, I thought you were telling us that you can do a video, audio. You can. Simultaneously, but. Oh, I do it every Saturday. Okay. I do a show called Ask the Podcast Coach because I want to play with live stuff. For the record, I don't recommend live, but I record it. I use a, a, a service called StreamYard, StreamYard.com, and I uh, log in. It streams it to YouTube. If I wanted to, it could go to Facebook, but I'm a little ADHD, and one is good for me. I don't need multiple chat rooms going. So I record it. It's me and a co-host. He dials in as well. We're on video. We're on YouTube Live. We get about 30 people every Saturday that say we like our Saturday morning cartoons. And when it's done, I take the, I pull that video down to my computer, I pull it into Audacity, and say export is audio. The video is on YouTube, the audio is my podcast. Okay. Related to that, why do you need the artwork? The artwork is for Apple. Apple likes things to be pretty. It's in the same way that like, why is not every, we go back to CDs, why is not every CD black and white? It's, it's something that catch the attention. It's, it's like the, the book cover. It's a book cover. Yeah. So, yeah, we do need to. Uh, I'm going to be around. Is there a break after this? I'm assuming. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to uh, we're going to take a break, and then we're going to be back for the afternoon workshop. If you haven't yet registered for that, please go to the registration table and do that. And let's give a huge hand of applause. Thank you, David. Yes. Thanks. See you. All.